All right, we are here with Making College Come True. I am Dr. J, Jennifer Herrera, and I am um, the superintendent of Tucson International Academy and have been a teacher forever. And also, of course, have been a principal and now superintendent. And I really enjoy working with kids and I enjoy working with families. And it is the passion of my life. And I have another passion of my life here with me, a fellow educator, an excellent teacher, and happens to be related to me, Rubina Herrera. Yay! Hello! Hi! (laughs) Rubina is a fifth and sixth grade teacher at Tucson International Academy East. Uh, Tucson International Academy, we have four schools um, kind of spread out across Tucson. So if people have to move, there's another TIA, uh, Tucson International Academy, near. And our goal is to um, provide continuity and consistency for kids um, uh, to stay on track to go to college. So if you want your child to go to college, we do have kindergarten through 12th grade all in one school. So each of our four locations has kindergarten through 12th grade. And it is all about um, those who want to go to college. Do we think that you have to go to college to be successful? No. No. (laughs) That's right. You do not have to be. It doesn't mean that you're not successful if you don't go to college. It means it's an opportunity and it's an option. And if you want that option, you want that door to open to you so that you can make a choice whether to go or not, that's what we do. We open that door for you, with you, by just directing what you study um, and the activities that you're involved in so you can be accepted to colleges. Uh, Tucson International Academy has been in existence for 20 years Woo-hoo-hoo! Wow. 20 <laughs> years that's uh, almost your whole life yes uh, <laughs> and it is um a, a school that has a hundred percent of our graduates accepted to college a hundred percent of our graduates are accepted to two or more colleges and how we do that is just designed by our program. We have the academics down. We know how to get people prepared academically. But it's much more than academics, which is what we'll talk about today. It's about experiences, connecting with the community. It's about working together with your family. Um, it's about knowing your goals, knowing your strengths, knowing your weaknesses, and pursuing things that light up your heart things that you are passionate about and so we try to help kids have opportunities to experience many things so they can see what they connect with so they can pursue that as a career and so today that is the topic of this radio show we're going to talk about many of the different experiences that we have uh, whether it's it's usually through bringing other people and organizations into our school and giving our kids a chance to experience something they wouldn't experience otherwise so that is the theme for today so we have many things coming up. Um, next week uh, is the calm before the storm because the week after that, the week of Valentine's Day, is Love of Reading Week at Tucson International Academy. And so as a teacher at Tucson International Academy, what are some of the activities that you know the kids are excited about as they get ready for, you know, celebrating reading and, and doing the different things that your school will be doing? Uh, yes, there's a lot of uh, there's a few things that they are excited for. One, of course, they love when older students get to come to their classrooms and they get to read to them, mm. just so they get someone that's even closer to their age ground age, and they can just read to them. Yeah. And then secondly, is our awesome guests that come to TIA, which is Mama and Papa Goose. Woohoo! I love yes. them. <laughs> they are awesome people yes. that just they touch your heart and. They move you through their books and how they are as people and their beautiful songs that Mama Goose sings. She's just lovely. Yeah, she is. And she's a certified teacher. I don't know if you knew that. She taught first grade for many, many years. And she's definitely a a reading specialist, a literacy expert. And they um, just love children. And her husband is her partner. And on top of being a a guru of... um, Uh, connectivity with computers at a very very high level uh, which is what he does he travels all over the United States doing that Um, they also have a publishing company and so that's one of the things that we got to do uh, or participate in is they have a a book competition where students can submit a story and they choose uh, from a number of of, uh, um, applicants they choose which story to um, to publish and 
this year, two Tucson International Academy stories were chosen. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. I've um, never heard of any school do that for their students. Me either. <laughs> Show the um, one book there. You can just oh, hold it up yeah. because there is the camera right there. We do have this one. Yeah, this is one of our students, um, The Girl in Red. And so um, we're going to have this author, this student who is now a published author. We're going to have her on the show, um, not next week, but the week after, with Mama Goose and Papa Goose themselves. And so this is a little prelude to it. We also have another fabulous book uh, called Carlita's Christmas. And that was written also by a 10th grade student. This one was written by a 6th grade student. Mm -hmm. So we're really excited about that. And and then show the other book there. We have another book and another author right here from Tucson in Arizona and also the actual um, co-host with me on this show, uh, Making College Come True, John McLean. Pastor John McLean is in a veteran um, and he has written lots of stories about um, about homelessness and particular for um, veterans. And so this is a story about um, uh, one of the encounters he had with a homeless uh, a person who is no longer homeless and just what that awesome. transition looks like. And it's right here local. It's right here in Tucson. Wow. He also did run for mayor of Tucson um, just not that many years ago. Wow. And he also changed uh, 13 laws. He initiated change in the laws of Tucson so that the homeless uh, situation would not have to be a problem. It's always going to be a challenge, but it doesn't have to be problematic. And so how could the the um, police and how can the agencies here in Tucson work together to help people um, find homes? And so he was key in that. And he even has a DVD that tells his story. And um, it's quite, uh, it's, it's a tearjerker. So yes. it's, and it's also victorious at the end, which makes it a wonderful movie. <laughs> yes, definitely. And he is still young. He's got more chapters of that book to write and more DVDs to make. Uh, because um, he's having success and Tucson is benefiting from that. So he wrote a story about it. And so kids at a young age are now going to be able to understand um, maybe a little bit better um, who the homeless are and, and uh, see that there's hope for them. So because sometimes it can be discouraging when you see someone in bad shape and they're on the streets and kids do worry. They do mm -hmm. get upset about it, don't they? They do. Yeah. Has your kids ever talked about homeless situation here in Tucson or anything? Um, thankfully, I have not heard from my students or anyone around, mm -hmm. but there is a few that just move places to places, and mm. that's just, oof, it takes a toll on them. Yeah, the constant change and yeah. not having a secure location. Yes. Um, I know sometimes um, families go through hard times. Mm -hmm. I mean, if mom and dad yep. lose a job or if someone gets sick, especially with COVID, that is a real challenge. And so that's something that we do um, in schools. We get the, I want, I'm going to say um, it's not necessarily a pleasure, but we get the opportunity to help um, not let it be such a negative in their life that it drags them down, but that right. there are resources and we can uh, give them access to as many resources as we know about here in Tucson. And I know at our school, we do have one pretty cool resource, which is working with another local agency called GAP Ministries, G-A-P Ministries. And GAP Ministries is just that. It's like to fill in the gap when you're having trouble. So we'll talk more about the different programs we have at Tucson International Academy when we come back. This is Making College Come True uh, for Tucson International Academy. Be right back. We now return to the Making College Come True radio show. Brought to you by Tucson International Academy. All right, welcome back to Making College Come True. I am Dr. J here with Rubina Herrera, and we are both affiliated with Tucson International Academies, which are four charter schools, kindergarten through 12th grade, located right here in Tucson. Each of our schools has kindergarten through 12th grade, which is what makes a, us very unique because yep. you don't often have kindergartners in the same building with 12th graders. But in our case, it really works because families really like to stay together. And sometimes an older sibling will have a younger sibling. And, and it's quite nice to see the family be able to participate in events all together, you know, and they can see the kindergartners dance and they can see the older kids dance. It's mm -hmm. a, a good time for our folklorico, for um, many of our other activities. So uh, that's who we are. And we're here to talk about what it takes to get to college. 
um, college is an opportunity for um, extended growth. You know, you're growing all through kindergarten through 12th grade. I mean, you get to mm-hmm. see them grow. I get to see them grow. I got to see you grow. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's especially like, at TIA. There's yeah. just something different. We do things very differently. Yeah. I, I haven't quite put my finger exactly on it. It's just kind of who we are, isn't it? We just, we stay on them. If they keep messing up, we're like, uh oh, no, we got to fix this. <laughs> how are you going to fix this? Yeah. And we make them tell them. They, we make them say how they're going to fix it. And I think that's what really helps. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, um, we're, we live in a time where I've heard people say we have cancel culture. Have you heard people talk about that? Oh, yeah. I mean, cancel culture <laughs> is where you get mad and you just unfriend them. Or you get mad and you just quit your job. Or you get mad and you just go to another school. And the thing is, it's real hard to do all that change all the time. And what if we learned how to just kind of right our wrongs and make a way to... Um, make it so that it does work without having to move and up uproot everything from every place and every relationship. I think that that would be mm-hmm. a nice little dream, wouldn't it? Oh, yes. <laughs> and I would say that is something that we do try to do at school, at Tucson International Academy. Definitely. Because continuity is important. And being known, when you arrive at school, our schools are small enough that we know everybody's name mm-hmm. and everybody knows us. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's, um, we even get a chance, I mean, I'm much older than you, of course, being your mother. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and I get to see like um, uh, kids that we had in school who graduated with us now bringing their kids to our school. So it's multi-generational. Um, oftentimes cousins will come, you know, they'll, they'll move, uh, they'll be new to Tucson and the family will invite them. I know one time we had like 15 cousins and relatives and brothers and sisters from one family in one school. That was oh, down at yeah. Midvale. That happens. And um, I think it's neat for the family because today's world, often you can have one child in an elementary school, one in a middle school, and one in a high school. That's three different schools the mom and dad have to navigate, three different schedules, three different mm-hmm. um, events. I mean, if they have folklorico at one, it doesn't mean they're having it at the other two, and it's not all in one place. It's in three different places. So it's hard to be um, celebrating Uh, as a family it's more separated out so I know that's one thing that we try to do at Tucson International Academy is celebrate the whole idea of family that you can all be in one place and look out for one another and enjoy Mm -hmm. um, events together we're individualistic enough that we can honor the differences and the types of learners because each family has different types of learners in it and that is our goal as well you know that we don't just stay for one type of person that we are a flexible school that can accommodate many learning styles yes flexible flexibility is key for it tia is. <laughs> it is oh, yes. <laughs> sometimes they say we're a little too flexible huh they say <laughs> whoa <laughs> but um what i like about it is is that the same job gets done they yeah. get educated they still get into college and it's, they have fun and they have fun uh, yeah. not the most important right oh yes <laughs> We tend to be maybe heavy on the fun side, but, you know, and that does come with a philosophy of life. Why does everything have to be a drag? Why does homework have to be so negative? Why does Mm -hmm. um, school have to be like, oh, I have to go to school? I I mean, what? That's so sad to me. I mean, school can be the opposite. Woo, let's go. We're going to be late. I don't want to be late to school. And coming every day and learning that consistency and and, uh, working your plan, you know, because um, each teacher has their schedule and that can be their plan and they can work it and they can negotiate it with the teacher. That's what I like. Yes. Have your students, um, this is your second year teaching, Mm -hmm. uh, so have your students ever tried to negotiate something? Yes. If we get this done, can we have recess, an (laughs) extra (laughs) recess? Tell me about that. All the time. Uh, (laughs) My... Wow. Um, <laughs> either extra recess or, Miss, can we, ha- if we behave really well this week, uh, can we watch a movie on Friday or Friday can we movie. go on a field trip mm-hmm. or just anything? They will, they definitely love to negotiate. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, while it could feel like, why are they just manipulating the system? You know, why don't they just do what I say? Yeah. I think that it's a powerful skill in life because when you went to college, did you have to negotiate some things? Oh, yes. Did you have to sometimes get your professor to let you turn something in late? Oh, yeah, many times. <laughs> it's going to happen, and it's okay. It's okay. It's part uh, of life, right? Yes. Uh, you cannot predict when you're going to get the flu. 
and that does no. wipe you out. So that can make you late. Um, it, maybe you're just plain got behind on things and you need right. a little time. But you can't just not turn something in. You have to let them know and you have to negotiate mm -hmm. a different um, timing for that submission. Yes, definitely. So I see it as like a life skill. Like, And also, how about taking charge of your life instead of just being depressed and saying, oh, my school's so boring or my life is so boring. What if we took responsibility for that and we said, well, what do I need? What would I want to change about my school? What would I like to change about my life? Hmm, I wish I could. I mean, I never get to see movies because I'm, I've got, you know, five siblings and they never let me choose. So I could say something like, Hmm, if we behave well, teacher, can we have a movie? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, what a way to solve the problem, right? And to yeah. negotiate for what you love and what you want and then to share what you love and want with your friends. That's mm -hmm. like the ultimate. Oh, which yeah. brings me to what I also created at TIA that I love, which I think you do too. And that is travel, oh, international yeah. travel. <laughs> the best. Traveling's amazing. Right. Now, you've been on trips with your dad and I, and mm -hmm. we're super fun, aren't we? Oh, yeah. <laughs> actually, yes, it's, it's quite a fun time, actually. <laughs> well, we do get along well. But when you had uh, your friends go with you, oh, yeah. how was that in comparison? It's just an extra bonus fun. It's just nice to have someone my age with me. Yeah, mm -hmm. that you can experience a laugh about the same thing, yeah. you know, or um, that you can, you know, try to um, buy or remember when we went to Japan and all the kids in, in Japan, we couldn't speak Japanese. They couldn't really speak English well, and we kept running into them and they wanted pictures with you. Oh, yeah. They, they didn't want me and your dad. They wanted you because <laughs> you were their age. You were a student also. And oh, yes. I just was seeing pictures the other day. Tons of people that wanted to get a picture with you. And then remember the little girl who was dressed in a um, uh, kimono, I guess? It, yeah. Yes. So that too. So uh, that was fun because you got a picture with a little one dressed like that. Mm -hmm. And so there's something about international travel with other people your age that makes it a lot of fun. It's also good to have a variety of people. So at Tucson International Academy, we do try to travel internationally every other year. With COVID, we're behind a year. I don't, I don't like that. I like to travel. I would rather travel, but we want to be safe first, safety first. Um, so what I can say is, is that, um, that travel is another experience that we offer our students and our moms and dads um, to come and join us and to be on those trips. And you might say money's a problem, but I tell you what, figuring out how to raise the money for something you really want mm -hmm. isn't that big of a problem. You can yeah. find ways and all of a sudden you go, oh my gosh, I came up with $3,000. Mm -hmm. And that's the joy of going on a trip. So that is part of Tucson International Academy as well. It is mm -hmm. another experience that people get to have um, as part of the community. And yeah. so um, I just, I just think I'm very thankful that we get to do that. So yeah. um, And it opens their eyes. It opens oh. people's and students' eyes, even the adults. Absolutely. So it's always fun to see them smile and be yeah. happy. Exactly. Okay. All right, we'll talk more about exciting opportunities and experiences at Tucson International Academy, and we'll be telling you more about our schedule coming up. This is Tucson International Academy, Making College Come True. We'll be right back. We now return to the Making College Come True radio show. Brought to you by Tucson International Academy. All right, we are back. This is the Making College Come True radio show brought to you by Tucson International Academies. Tucson International Academies, four charter schools right here in Tucson, Arizona. And we have four locations, kindergarten through 12th grade at each location. So we are here. I'm here today with one of our teachers and one of my close relatives, i.e. my daughter, uh, Rubina <laughs> Herrera, who is also a teacher at one of the TIAs and has some unique perspectives on how students um, are achieving um, their goals academically and otherwise at our schools. Plus, she is a graduate of Tucson International Academy herself. Yes. So, this is our 20th year. We're celebrating 20 years. Woo, woo, woo. Wow. Yeah, That's yeah. a long time. Hard to believe, <laughs> isn't it? I cannot yeah. believe it's been 20 years. So. Me either. <laughs> but before we went on break, we were talking a little bit about many of the international trips that we've taken and how powerful those are because you always get to learn another perspective and you're immersed in this other location with different sounds, smells, hearing the language um, mm -hmm. that you may or may not understand. Um, Culture the, shock and it's a lot of stuff. 
It is. And what's acceptable one place might not be acceptable in another. Mm -hmm. We learn that real quick, too. Yes. (laughs) And sometimes uh, things that um, they do in other countries with kids is different than what they do, what we would do here in the United States. And, you know, it's not right or wrong. It's just different. Mm -hmm. So that's what we um, enjoy experiencing. Um, We have had the pleasure of traveling really all over the world. We've been to China twice. We've been to Japan two or three times. (laughs) We've been to Australia once. Um, We've been to um, much of Europe, you know, Italy, France, um, England, Mm -hmm. Belgium, Germany. I mean, tons of... A um, lot of places. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Um, We've also been to Mexico, Mexico. Mm -hmm. Um, Many of our people in our school um, know... Spanish and um, are able to converse in Spanish or read or write and understand. Um, But we do make it a formal subject at our schools as well so that they can get even better. Um, So I love that part of us. Um, We also do some local trips. So tell us a little Mm -hmm. bit about the local trips you personally benefited from and what's coming up that you kind of think is important to talk about. Yes. Um, Well, locally, hmm. Or even state. Or as, <laughs> yeah, definitely <laughs> state. My, I always think of New York City. That, mm. That's, oh my gosh, it's amazing there. <laughs> and then Washington, D.C., mm. honestly, was a really, really fun time. Just seeing mm. the big monuments and seeing where Martin Luther King did his amazing speech was, oh, it was amazing. Yeah, being there, right? In that spot. Oh, yeah. Powerful. And it's really powerful. And just, it opens your eyes. And you're like, wow, this yeah. is real. This is real. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. And I remember that um, you all had to participate in some, uh, a very high educational program where you guys had to um, emulate uh, some of the the government interactions. Like I think you were in some sort of Senate um, type of uh, scenario. And I just remember poking my head and seeing one of you guys standing up talking and (laughs) addressing the whole crowd of like 150 kids. I was like, wow. Yes. (laughs) That was a young age to eighth grade or something. It was very young. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty young for Mm. that kind of intense speaking public speaking you know 150 of your peers that's tricky but no you guys were powerful i don't even (laughs) think about it much now (laughs) yeah i know you've spoken so many times but you know what i would say that's pretty common for tucson international academy kids right oh yeah we get them on mm -hmm. stage all the time i mean they are dancing like at the uh, reed park band shell Mm -hmm. for like 700 800 people I mean, just performing in front of that many people is huge, right? Definitely. Yeah. And I'm trying to think, where else did you perform? Um, Uh, Tucson Meet Yourself, we've performed at. Those are always fun. Yes. Um, Just at U of A when we had our career fairs there. Oh, yeah. It wasn't just TIA that would come see us. It would be other schools, too. Big time. Because it was open to the whole Tucson. It was it was really awesome. It was. Those were yeah. powerful times. And they were. Just the feedback you guys got, the positive reinforcement that the community mm-hmm. gave you was very empowering. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And it got us a chance to go walk around U of A. That's right. One yeah. of the local, uh, a place where I have donated much of my money. <laughs> 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 when my master's degree and my PhD were both at University of Arizona. And um, it's right here in Tucson. I mean, that is amazing to think that we have a university of that caliber right here in our backyard. Yeah. So, which is another reason we believe college can come true for anybody. We have Pima also Mm -hmm. nationally recognized actually all over the world. um, And it's a community college. And then we have U of A. So two big powerhouses right here in Tucson is amazing. It's great. I love it. Me too. (laughs) Um, I'm thinking of the, um, the college field trip. That's yes. coming up. Tell, tell about college road trip. You, you did that as a, a graduate or as Definitely. a high schooler. Right. And we just all got into this bus one night and we head over to Flagstaff first and we go to NAU, look at that campus and it's beautiful. There's snow, yeah. so we get to play in the snow. <laughs> and then we go to the Grand Canyon the next day and it's amazing. So we get to go swimming in their indoor pool at the hotel and... <laughs> have fun and just felt just be together as as a district because of all schools can go to this college tri- college trip yeah. then we go to gcu which is my college with yeah gcu woo, woo. <laughs> and uh go lopes yes and um <laughs> it's just a gorgeous <laughs> campus both campuses are beautiful but it's just i love gcu and it's beautiful you get to see the 
the classrooms and what activities you get to do. Mm-hmm. And it just opens up the student's eyes to say, oh, wow, maybe I do want to go to college. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and being there in person, right, you feel kind of the atmosphere. You can see the other students and do you is this your crowd or is the other university your crowd and not knowing which one because both are good well all all of them I mean there are so many opportunities right here in Tucson or or actually in Arizona Um, you can also go out of state right we went to a few out of state ones we went up to Indiana because that's where I'm from Mm -hmm. you got to see my alma mater Ball State University right gorgeous campus I loved it it is beautiful (laughs) had you gone there it would have been a very different experience oh yeah and it would be fun oh yeah (laughs) also it would just be different that's all definitely I love Indiana and I just love anything new (laughs) (laughs) how about Miami University what did you think even better (laughs) (laughs) it was just a gorgeous campus Uh, just nothing but greenery squirrels and awesome lovely people and fun extracurricular stuff you could do like ice skating and and hockey's big there, yeah, right? Hockey. We were surprised. We were there oh, right yeah. during a hockey game. We were like, wow, there's a line. Oh, they're going to the hockey game. But yes. that's just neat to see those different focuses, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah, and such- I wish other students could see Miami University because oh. it's beautiful. A huge, um, a very uh, um, well-known and respected uh, right. academic institution. And we did get to see Harvard University, yes, we went to Harvard. Awesome. That's right. <laughs> yeah, Harvard yeah. has a lot of um, opportunities. And even if you don't go to Harvard for the four-year university um, a degree, they have all kinds of summer programs, where, wow. especially for teachers, by the way, just saying. And right. what an opportunity, right, to um, experience uh, life in New York's uh, area. It was Boston area, I guess. Oh, right, right. Yeah, so, so much to do with colleges. Oh, yes. I love that. Well, we will be back right after uh, this message or these commercials. And it's Tucson uh, International Academy making college come true. We'll be right back. We now return to the Making College Come True radio show. Brought to you by Tucson International Academy. All right, we are back making college come true. Um, this is uh, Dr. J. Jennifer Herrera, and I'm here with Rubina Herrera. Um, I am the superintendent of Tucson International Academy, and Rubina is a second-year teacher at Tucson International Academy East. Woo-hoo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I spent most of my career teaching kindergartners, and you are spending yours more with the middle schoolish Fifth age. And six. Yeah. They're awesome. That's mm-hmm. so good. And all grades are awesome. They really are, aren't they? Yes. I mean, I ended up teaching all grades by the end. I even did, I uh, was even a, a adjunct professor for a semester, and I really enjoyed that as well. So it's yeah. like um, teaching is a whole career opportunity, and I'll just give my quick plug to all of you out there. You know, there's no better profession that gives you the opportunity to do good for other people and to affect the future generations mm-hmm. than teaching. There just isn't. And you can do it... Um, through your example of just trying to be kind, being fair, being um, organized so that you can focus their learning to accomplish the goals that they are coming to your school for. At our school, it is focused on uh, making college come true. Mm -hmm. A lot of our families, um, the the students will be the first generation to go to college, you know. Mm -hmm. Unlike our our family, I mean, uh, Rubina's great-grandmother has a college degree. Her grandmother has a college degree. Uh, her mother has a college degree, and now she has a degree. And sometimes that's how college is. It seems like once someone in the family goes to college, a lot uh, the rest of the family has people who also go. But until you get that first person who went to college, it's a lot of paperwork and red tape. And, I mean, could you have really done it on your own? It would have no, been tricky, no right? No way. Yeah, yeah. Not on my own. And even I needed help. I mean, I still can't do a FAFSA. Believe me, the FAFSA. Oh, the FAFSA is something else. (laughs) (laughs) There's always a a, um, a detour for me, and I always hit the wrong button. But I'm telling you, it is. It takes like a like a little team to help get each person accepted to college, and that's what we specialize in at Tucson International Academy. We walk beside parents, and parents um, bring their kids to our high school in particular because they want them to go to college. And so we want to help them to achieve their goal. And so we make sure the academics are on point. Mm-hmm. Um, most of our kids get some sort of a scholarship offer because oh, yeah. they're, um, they are academically capable. Um, then the next thing is just figuring out the money and making a financial plan is hard. Mm-hmm. It's expensive. Um, there is um, uh, scholarships, which are free money. There are grants, which is free money, but then there's also loans, mm-hmm. which we've heard a lot about loans. and. Um, you know, loans um, don't have to be scary if you plan wisely. 
Right. And so being a PhD person who had a lot of loans, <laughs> I can tell you um, I know the ins and outs of how to pay off those loans and get them paid off for you. And in my case, I am 100% debt-free with the loans, which happened just this Woo-hoo. year. So it's very exciting. Yeah, It's awesome. Yeah, you remember. You were like, what? Oh, yeah. What? <laughs> it's honestly encouraging because yes. it just shows with a lot of hard work and dedication, you can do it. Yes. You can do it. So don't be afraid to take that loan if you have to. Yeah. Don't let it just, don't, do not do it just because of the money. Mm -mm. Take it because you never know when you'll have another chance to do it. That's right. And, And once you don't go to college, once you veer off from high school and you go do something else, once you start to make your own money, it's really hard not to have that money anymore. And so even if it's a, um, a $15 an hour job, which sounds good when you've made nothing and now you're making mm-hmm. 15 an hour. But then you find out that to live, it actually takes all of that money and then it's a yeah. little bit of a compromise and then you don't have your degree done and now you're trying to live and you have to have that money and now you're trying to do your degree. You've just added another, um, another um, uh, not obstacle, but another challenge. challenge. You know? And then also, you know, depending, like some people wait until after they have their kids to go to college, which is, is fine. That's yeah. certainly a plan. Some people want to do it before they have kids. I did um, schooling. Uh, I have a bachelor's that I did without kids. I had a master's I did without kids. And then, lo and behold, in the middle of my doctorate came Rubina. (laughs) (laughs) And that was a lot harder, just having a child and having um, that focus um, split because you do care about your kids. Mm -hmm. So it's something to consider. You know, sometimes you cannot control when a a child comes, which, you know, I was happy it happened. So I was happy to make it work. They are a blessing. Oh, Mm -hmm. they are. They are. So, um, and you are. (laughs) Yes, of course. But I mean, that's the the truth. You know, that we're just Mm -hmm. talking um, sincerely here. It's it's just, that's how life is. Life is um, not always predictable. But if you can control what you can control, go for it. What Mm -hmm. you can't control, don't resist it. Just make it work with what happens. And I've seen it work for everybody under every circumstance because making college come true has become my life. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, definitely. It has, so, sure has. Even Pastor John McLean just went back to U of A. <laughs> wow. And he says it's because of this radio show. He said, well, you got me interested in it again. It was All something right. I wanted to finish, and I just didn't get finished. Awesome. So I would say to you listening, if you're a parent or if you've um, veered off that track and you didn't finish but you wished you had, it is never too late. You never. can always finish it. And there's so many ways to do it now. You can do mm-hmm. online. You can oh, yeah. do night classes. You can do regular day classes. There are many ways to accomplish a goal. And mm-hmm. I would be happy to talk to anyone who wanted to um, brainstorm some ideas and figure out a way to make it happen. So, mm-hmm. again, um, feel free to contact me at Tucson International Academies, even if you're not a student and even if you're older than 30. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we wanted to say a little bit more about some of the special activities we offer at Tucson International Academy because we believe getting a college education is more than the academics. Um, Yes, the academics are important. You Mm -hmm. do refine them. But didn't you find it kind of like the same material? They just wanted it a little faster, a little deeper. Yeah, deeper, more advanced. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You had to maybe know a little bit more details about the subject matter. Right. Got to know certain formulas. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, it's it's more of the same, but it's a little deeper, a little bit more, and they do present it faster. Like you got to mm-hmm. catch it quicker, but you've already seen the material, so it's not so bad. Um, it's definitely a challenge, but you have to learn time management. I mm-hmm. guess what we said the last time you were on the show, we yeah. said time management is everything. It's important. And you know what? When is it, is it important? Even people who retire they're like oh my god i feel like i'm more busy now than when i worked you know oh, wow. <laughs> and it's they said that a lot of them say the reason they think they feel that way is because they just don't manage their time yeah. so if you if you don't mind just rolling with everything well then roll with it but if you do mind well then just manage your time a little bit and you'll be able to make sure you get what's important to you done right so i mean leadership do you think that going to college afforded you leadership opportunities Definitely. They they do give you opportunities to lead. Um, mm-hmm. Like in, at GCU, they are very, since it's a Christian university, you could lead your own Bible studies if you okay. wanted to, or you could become an RA, uh-huh. um, which you can do at any school. Which is a resident. Any college. Yeah, resident assistant. assistant and you, you just watch over the halls, keeping in check and 
that they're following the rules. <laughs> yes, so everyone can have peace, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> it's important. Sure mm-hmm. is. And um, what about some of the clubs and stuff? Do you think the club that you were a part of added something to you? Yes. My yeah. favorite was the dance one. Yeah, tell us about I it. I was a sorority slash dance team. Mm. So we were all sisters, and you had to learn their pledge and their their motives and then you have to learn their routines and then go perform at events that they had. <laughs> and then I also went to sign language club, which was super f- just fun. Yeah. Where would you learn that, right? In yeah. your regular life. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I found out that there's different kinds of sign language out there. So it's it's a whole world of it its own. Is. <laughs> it sure is. And, and yeah. It's amazing. It's a fun time. Yeah. Cute. It's another language. Yeah. Yes. And then they also have a hip-hop club and... They had Hawaiian clubs, they had yes. cultural clubs, they even had vet cu- clubs. Vet clubs? If you were interested What's... in being a vet, oh. you can just learn certain some things within that, in yeah. that club. It was well, they're probably animal lovers, right? Oh, yeah. So, they're... I mean, so you're around fellow people who really love animals, mm-hmm. want to care for them. and Yeah. yeah. That's very cool. That's I, I didn't really, I don't think I've ever heard of that one. That's a new one yeah. for me today. So. It was really cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. I mean, how about the um, sports? Yeah, exactly. Sports. I love sports. It's just something about it, getting active and feeling like you're a part of a team is really nice. And you can meet new people there. And I played, oh, beach volleyball (laughs) at GCU. In yeah. Arizona, <laughs> in a yes. beach. I love it, you know, and well, we have so certainly have a lot of sand, so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but being able to do the beach volleyball, I remember you saying that you had practices sometimes at seven in the morning. Yes, it was freezing cold too. <sighs> it was in the winter yes. during this time at Ooh. 7 a.m. with out with or without socks on on the cold <laughs> sand and it was kind of wet too <laughs> Yuck. i don't know Ooh. if i would like that but i mean what do you think that did for you like you had to make a decision huh do i really mm-hmm. want to play or not it was discipline for sure and oh. i appreciate that because if you truly want something you're going to go for it so i really wanted to be a part of a team and meet new people and play volleyball because it's fun yeah so i woke up before my my class, that was at <laughs> seven a.m. <laughs> or eight thirty or something like that. Uh huh. And I would wake up early, go to my practice, enjoy it, have fun, and then I'd feel rejuvenized after that. Yeah, all that physical yeah. w- workout, really, right? Mm-hmm. Definitely. And you did play volleyball in high school, so I think you know. I would say to people listening to this show, if you have a high schooler or you are a high schooler yourself. I encourage you to try things even if you aren't sure you're good at it. You don't have to be mm-hmm. good at it. Just do it. Learn to play volleyball. You'll learn if you get on the team. You'll learn yeah. really fast. You might find you have a, a natural ability that you never knew was there and you never would have known if you didn't try it. So try new things. It's okay if yes. you don't stick with it forever. Having that one-off experience could lead to something else that is your thing. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I always started karate when I was a kid. And yes. I, I almost got to black belt, but no, my little kid butt was like, I don't want to <laughs> be in there anymore. So And your whole <laughs> um, uh, organization moved. Remember they moved? Yes, sadly. <laughs> yes. But, you know, good for you, you got to brown belt, mm-hmm. which is like right before. Well, it was a brown black belt, so it was literally Ooh. one belt before black. Wow. So. That's huge. Yeah, it was you know, fun. That brings me to, um, at Tucson International Academy, we try to expose the kids to um, people who have unique uh, background. And this is one, Frank Dukes. He is um, who they wrote the screenplay of Bloodsport for about his life and so just knowing people like that who his life became a movie that's interesting wow. yeah mm-hmm. even if there's um all kinds of parts to it and being a master martial artist right right that might be someone's thing so we want to yeah. encourage you to get involved try new things do it don't be afraid and discipline yourself right yes it's because worth it it's worth it discipline is leadership that's what gets you where you want to go definitely well this has been a great pleasure thanks for being on the show yeah, thank you this is the making college come true a radio show come see us at tucson international academy visit us online at tucson have a good day <laughs>